Welcome to our use case, ICU patient care in an isolation room. Today we're going to tell you the story of our patient, Jerry, who was admitted to our hospital's ICU several days ago with a severe COVID-19 infection, and he was placed in an isolation room in our ICU care unit and was intubated. He's responded well over the last few days to therapy, and he's now been extubated and is awaiting the beginning of non-invasive ventilation trials. Obviously, our hospital endeavors to care for Jerry, uh, provide him the highest level of care as well as in the most efficient way. And the way we achieve this in our in vision of the future is utilizing uh, new standards that are available to allow data aggregation, alarm management, documentation, uh, all to occur outside of the isolation room. This is accomplished by using new standards, new IEG profiles called SDPI, which is based on 11073 standards from IEEE, uh, based on SDC, which is Service Oriented Device Connectivity. In addition, communication between the medical devices and the IT systems is also accomplished using uh, already available IEG DEC profiles for vitals export to EMRs. Now to set the stage, we have our ICU area, which is an isolation room, the anteroom area, and the large screen here represents the uh, nurse's station. And at this point, I believe it's now time for Jerry's first non-invasive ventilation trial. Hi, my name is Dennis, and I would like to show you our isolation room and how will things work here. As you already heard, Jerry shall receive non-invasive invasive ventilation trials up to four times a day for pneumonia, prophylaxis, and his diaphragm training. The whole treatment of Jerry is supported by a multi-modality system concept, which contains a Draga ventilator, a Draga patient monitor, as well as Arcomate syringe pumps for the infusion therapy. All these devices use the IHE SDPI profile to gather data into the anteroom where the point of care cockpit is placed. The point of care cockpit also is usable for remote operations for the device inside of the room. Are there any alerts inside this room? They will be forwarded to the ASCOM Micro 3 handheld, which I got in my pocket, and into the nurse's station to the ASCOM dashboard you can see behind me. There are also the other rooms which contain Jim, Joey, Rose in the different sections of our ward, so not only Jerry's alarms will be forwarded. The documentation of the vital signs and the medical record will be done by EPIC. Now it's time for the first visitation of the day. So imagine the caretaker of Jerry, the physician, occupational and respiratory therapist are all inside this room checking that Jerry's behavior as well and they will set up the ventilator to start the first NIF trial of the day. They set it up to the needs of Jerry's current situation. They will change some alarm limits on the M540 patient monitor and they will change the flow rate of the medication to ensure that he's pain free but not deep sleeping. At the end they will check that he tolerates the NIF and leave the room. The clinician who is responsible for Jerry will stay in the anteroom using the point of care cockpit to start a non-invasive blood pressure measurement to ensure that Jerry's circle is under stable conditions. Starting the measurement from outside the room starts the interval inside the room because the monitor is set to a default interval of 15 minutes. And after this measurement, the clinician ensures that everything is fine. Jerry tolerates the ventilation trial, the stable is under circle, the circle is under stable conditions, and the clinician will go on, do other stuff on the ward before he will come back in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Christian from ASCOM. At this point, the clinician's left the room, gone on to take care of other patients, and very soon though, an alarm is received on their micro device indicating an SPO2 low alarm. That same alarm is also enunciated centrally at the nurse station so the other clinicians on the unit, the charge nurse and others can see that and have visibility into what's going on in each of the patient rooms. The clinician has the ability to either accept the alarm and take responsibility, hit busy or reject on the phone and have that automatically escalate to another caregiver, their backup or a charge nurse, um, or they can simply do nothing if they're gloved up and busy 
they can rest assured that that alarm will automatically escalate to the backup caregiver to make sure that alarm is taken care of. In this case, the clinician decides to go ahead and accept the alarm and take responsibility, at which point they proceed back to the patient room, to the ante room, to check on the patient's vitals on the Draeger point of care cockpit, and also visually inspect the patient's condition through the window into the patient room. So right now it looks like that everything is under stable conditions and Jerry is pain-free, stress-free, and maybe has just cuffed. Using the point of care cockpit, the clinician sees that the alarm limits are maybe set too narrow to the current situation. So the point of care cockpit is used to change the alarm limits to a more fitting situation. And the point of core ca care cockpit is also used to check the current vital signs and the vital signs of the last few minutes in a trend so that the clinician ensures that not only right now everything is fine but the last 5, 10 or 15 minutes as well. And last but not least there are syringe pumps inside the room. So the point of care cockpit is used to check the volume which is left in the pumps to prevent upcoming alarms in the next few minutes. And it looks like everything is well and the pumps have enough volume left that the clinician can go on, prepare his next visitation of the room, prepare some syringe pumps and will come back later to end the NIF trial and change the medication. Hi, I'm Andy and I'm here to talk about the infusion pumps. Um, so the caregiver has now gone away uh, to prepare the medication um, as indicated by the, uh, by the point of care device. Um, the next event for our patient is that there's an, an alarm on the pumps um, so historically what would happen is that the, the caregiver would have to change into their PPE, would have to go into the isolation room to find out what was wrong with the pumps and then may have to come out again to get some more medication. What can happen now is that the, the alarm from the pump is immediately displayed on the, patient, on the uh, caregiver's handheld um, so they can see what the alarm is and they can see which drug is involved with that as well. So they can make a decision about how urgent that alarm is. This information is also displayed on the central nurses station so everyone in the team is aware of what's going on with the patient. In this case, it's an occlusion alarm on a critical drug so that the, uh, the caregiver knows they have to respond to this very urgently. Okay, so the other big advantage of this type of integration is that it supports silent alarms. So um, we all know how dangerous alarms can be for patients and lots of alarm fatigue, lots of alarm noise can damage their recovery. And with this system, uh, the pumps will, the screens will flash, it will display that it's an occlusion alarm, but there'll be no sound around the patient, so the patient's not disturbed. Um, the alarm is then handed to the distributed alarm system to be displayed on the handheld device and also on the central nurse's station. Okay, so that's the pumps, so I'll now hand over to the EMR provider, which is Epic. Hello, everyone. My name is Adriana, and I'm from Epic. So once the provider is comfortable with the care that they have provided the patient within the room, they will go ahead and exit the room and go into the anteroom in order to complete their documentation within EPIC. Some of that documentation includes information provided directly into EPIC from Drager and some of the vital signs that we've received from them automatically using HL7B2 standards. <laughs> The provider will review the information that they've received electronically and review those values to make sure that they're comfortable with what they received on the patient's chart. Review the vitals to validate the information. Mm -hmm. There we go. And they can check to make sure that they're comfortable with the information that has come into EPIC. Once they are comfortable with that data, they will go ahead and click on the File and Close button to add the information to the patient's chart. Visually inspect the patient to make sure that they are comfortable and then go ahead and care for the rest of their patients. Well, now it's several days later. Jerry has been recovering and recuperating very well. He's tolerated his non-invasive ventilation and is thankfully getting on the mend and is hopefully going to be discharged soon. 
So we hope that you agree that by utilizing all these open medical device standards in the point of care cockpit, the point of care ventilation, patient monitor, and syringe pumps uh, allowed our hospitals to provide Jerry the best pair possible while also maintaining the safety of the staff by limiting the number of opportunities that they would need to enter the room and expose themselves to potential pathogens. So that concludes our story today. We certainly appreciate your attendance and hope that you would hang around and ask us any questions you might have, as well as we invite you to take a copy of our white paper on these new standards and concepts, or scan the barcode and get a PDF copy. So again, thank you so much for your attendance this morning.